Hold on, wait, so, so technically, technically I turned my 4K image from a 12 megapixel A7S III into a 50 megapixel image, and that actually looks good. Let me know if this has ever happened to you. You finish a video for a client. They love it, everyone's happy, but then as you deliver the final video files, the client says, oh, can you just send us some photos as well? That'd be great. Obviously, you, you start to panic. I didn't take any photos. Was I supposed to take photos? Was I supposed to take photos? Was I supposed to take photos? Nobody, nobody asked me for photos. The brief doesn't mention anything about photos. Okay, it's fine. They didn't mention it. But now that they saw how awesome your video was, they just realized that, hmm, That'd be nice to have some photos of as well. So just export some stills straight out of the videos and send them over. Export some stills straight out of the video. Straight out of the video. Hold on, hold on, don't worry. Apparently, we live in an age of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So there are some pretty cool tools out there now to help us with situations like this. So let's see if an AI can help us upscale our embarrassingly tiny screen grabs into something more representable for the client to use. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm a full-time photographer and videographer living in Sweden. I was thinking about adding a YouTuber to the mix, but uh, it's not really there yet. A couple of months ago, we were upscaling 1080p videos into 4K with artificial intelligence. Then, just a few weeks ago, we upscaled a 4K video to 16K, just so we could take a portrait and turn that into a, an extreme close-up of just one eye. Also, with artificial intelligence. Up here, if you have not seen them yet. But today, we're going to use AI to make our photographs larger. Larger, sharper, and just... Overall, a little bit better. The software that I'm talking about is from the same developers that made that video enhanced software that I talked about in those two previous videos, uh, Topaz Labs. After I bought their video enhancing software, I actually went ahead and bought all of their photo enhancing softwares as well. There is an affiliate link in the description if you wanna try out any of these softwares and help out my channel at the same time. To be honest, when I bought these, I didn't really know what to use them for yet. I was just sort of swept up in how cool the technology was. You know, I just had a feeling that it would probably end up being useful in some way in the future, or maybe just fun to play around with. And then, literally just a few days after I picked these up, that situation where a client asked me for photos after a video shoot that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, actually happened. And thanks to these softwares, I was actually able to deliver images that not only would work for web purposes, but could also work for print as well. Images that I could be a little bit more uh, proud of, I guess. Confident that they would hold up in any situation, thanks to the increase in quality that I got. Because, you know, even if a screen grab from 4K footage could look really nice, you just know that it's not going to be as good as if you've had the time to photograph that same scene with a still camera as well. So the software I'm talking about is called Gigapixel AI. It's one of th three, I think, softwares that they have. Um, there's another one for just noise reduction and one for uh, just sharpening images. While this one, Gigapixel AI, is made, to, is made for you know, upscaling photos without losing any detail. And I've also found that it handles noise reduction and sharpening really well, not just the upscaling part. And when it works well, like when you find the right model and settings that work for your image, it can be pretty mind-blowing. Let's start upscaling uh, some screen grabs. Just to follow my example in the beginning, I want to jump into Premiere Pro and export and export some stills from a video. Uh, these shots right here are actually from a stock photography shoot that I did last summer, which, now that I mention it, might actually be another great use case for this kind of software. Let's say you're a stock contributor, but you only do videos. Maybe you can use this technique to get some nice still images out of your videos as well and upload that to your stock portfolio. Might be worth having a look at. Uh, anyway, let's grab some stills from these two videos. Let's find a frame that is already as nice and sharp as possible because we do want to set ourselves up for um, success. Now this one looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure they're exported as TIFFs. Hopefully giving us some extra quality and um, wiggle room compared to uh, regular JPEGs. So that's one. I'm just going to grab maybe like one of these close-ups of his hand as well. That one looks pretty nice and sharp. 
I think that's enough. We got one image from each clip. All right, now I'm just going to uh, boot up Gigapixel AI and drag these images right into the software. Uh, let's see. There we go. Make sure you have this four-way uh, comparison view selected because it's they can easily compare uh, four different AI models at the same time. And that will just make it easier for you to find the right model for uh, the specific image that you're looking at. Right here, you can see, uh, you can select how much larger you would like to make your image. I'm just going to uh, select times two. I think, I think that should be more than enough. And that should create the equivalent of a 50 megapixel image, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong, which is pretty crazy to think about since I capture these on my 12 megapixel Sony a7S III. Uh, I'm just gonna jump over to the second image, see how that one looks. I think actually most of these look really good. The art and CG version looks surprisingly good. It usually doesn't do that well with regular photographs. Um, but I think for this, I might just go for the low resolution version or the standard. The standard almost looks too crispy like too much sharpness and we don't want to overdo it. <laughs> I don't know. What the hell? I'll go for the standard version. So right down here you can see the original size and this is the export size right here. I'm gonna make sure these two are selected. I'm just gonna save these two. Uh, same image format, auto file name, auto directory, that's fine. Now while I export these two images, I just want to mention a few things that's good to keep in mind. Do play around with the different AI models and see if you can find one that really suits your image and take it easy. Don't go too far with the sharpening because that's just going to destroy your image instead. Same thing goes for size. Just make it large enough. Don't be sad when the software can't make your image the size of a football field. This software is here to give you that extra, you know, nudge towards a better end result. Now before I end this video, I'm just going to open both of these up uh, in Photoshop just so we can compare the before and afters. I'm just going to upscale this original image 200%. All right, so here, this is the original image, upscale 200%, just in Photoshop. And right here is the AI version. And as you can see, it's a lot sharper, it's really crispy, it has less noise, and I think it looks fantastic. Let's just have a look at the portrait shot as well. You can see the size difference when I just throw in the original on top of the upscaled version. Uh, but I'm just going to upscale the original so we get the same size here. Zoom in to 100%. As you can see, the original is pretty blurry. Turn that off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's the upscaled version. Can you see how crispy that looks? It's almost a little bit too sharp in some places. Um, but I mean, compared to the original, it looks pretty amazing. And definitely usable. You could probably print this on a magazine page now. I mean, it definitely made my screen grabs look better. And in the future, I think there's a good chance that I might pick out my favorite moments from stock footage I film, upload those images to my portfolio as well. I mean, if there's a great moment in there that I did not capture with a stills camera. And that's just amazing. I haven't had that kind of confidence since I was shooting with a red Epic camera. And uh, yeah, I think this is a good place to end this video. As I said, if you want to check out this software for yourself, give it a try. There is an affiliate link in the description. And if you're seeing my previous videos, uh, Topaz Labs actually hooked me up with a promo code for 15%, so that's down there in the description as well, if you decide that you want to purchase the software after you've tried it out. I really hope you found this video useful in some way. If you thought it was interesting or just fun to watch, please leave a like on the video. It is the very best way to help out uh, me, help the channel grow, and it's also a good way for you to let YouTube know what kind of content you enjoy. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And it actually looks good. And, and it actually looks good. And it actually looks good. And it actually, and it actually looks good. And it actually looks.
good. Good acting. <laughs>